Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Krista Clear, our SEC compliance based educational podcast brought to you by Compliance University, a service of Focus One Associates. This week, I'd like to formally introduce my colleague Krista Zitfeld, aka The Professor. In all seriousness, Krista has years of experience working with and providing compliance insight to investment advisors of all shapes and sizes. And I'm really happy to be working with her to develop and present this new podcast. All right, so now I'm going to turn the mic over to Krista, and she'll give the introduction of what we'll cover today. Hi, Caleb, and thank you for that kind introduction. As Caleb said, we will continue to provide clarity to the rules under the Investment Advisors Act of 1940. And because we know you are busy, our objective is to always do so in bite-sized pieces. Today, we are continuing our focus on various elements of the Code of Ethics, having defined a supervised person and an access person in our last podcast, Today, we are discussing reportable securities. Thank you for listening in. Thank you, Krista. According to Rule 204A-1 under the Investment Advisors Act of 1940, all access persons must submit holdings and transaction reports for any reportable securities in which the access person has or acquires any direct or indirect beneficial ownership. In this case, an access person would be considered a beneficial owner of securities if the securities are owned by any immediate family members that share the access person's household. So if, for example, your spouse or children own any securities, you as an access person must submit holdings and transactions reports for any relevant securities that they own. The SEC considers all securities to be reportable unless they fall under the following five exceptions. Exception 1. Direct obligations of the government of the United States. Number two, money market instruments. So bankers' acceptances, bank certificates of deposit, commercial paper, and high-quality short-term debt instruments, including repurchase agreements. Number three, shares issued by money market funds. Exception four, shares issued by open-end funds unless the advisor or a control affiliate acts as the investment advisor or principal underwriter for the fund. And the fifth exception, Shares issued by unit investment trusts that invest exclusively in one or more open-end funds, none of which are affiliated mutual funds. As always, be sure to click on our supplement to this podcast and make sure to check out our YouTube channel, LinkedIn page, and blog to find any of our previous podcasts and resources. And if you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out. Have a great week. Class dismissed.